baptizer appeared in the wild preaching a baptism of life change that leads to forgiveness of sins. People thronged to him from Judea and Jerusalem and as they confessed their sins were baptized by him in the Jordan River into a changed life. John wore a camel hair habit tied at the waist with a leather belt. He ate locusts and wild field honey. As he preached he said the real action comes next. The star in this drama, to whom I am a mere stagehand, will change your life. I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life in for a kingdom life. His baptism, a holy baptism by the Holy Spirit, will change you from the inside out. Thank you, Kathy. Let me just take care of this. So as some of you know, I've been a pastor for a while now, right? 20 years with you, 24 years ordained. I really got a start in ministry way back in 1980. And I got to say, in those years, I've baptized more than a few folks. Anybody who's been a After a while, raise your hand if you way back in seminary days, right? Way back in seminary, our professors told us all sorts of things that we needed to know and be able to share about baptism and its history in our Christian tradition. And they made sure that we remembered that it's a sacrament, right? We have two in the Reformed Christian tradition the sacrament of baptism and the sacrament of communion. And baptism, like all sacraments, is a visible sign of God's invisible grace. That's what they teach us, right? And all sacraments are this tangible, physical thing. Now, communion is bread and the juice, right? And baptism is all about water. And in seminary, they teach us any water in a pinch. If you need to, and you want, you have somebody who wants to be baptized, and all you got is puddle, use it. In fact, Bob shared with me, if you need to, you can share spit. It's water. And that's what you need for a baptism if you're in a pinch. I'm pretty sure. Bob's not going to be doing that, and me neither, okay? So you can all calm down. <laughs> but also, as Bob and I were talking about this the other day, and we were chatting about baptism, he said to me, when someone wants to get baptized, the answer is always, yes, yes. So for Bob and me at least, I can tell you absolutely truly, that we see baptism as a gift of God and it is to be denied to no one under any circumstances, okay? Nonetheless, over the years, there have been some strange sort of perversions or reorientations of the message of baptism. And I can tell you for a fact that I've had my share of opportunities to tell nervous parents, no, your baby is not going to go to hell if it doesn't get baptized right now. No, that is not true. And I've also been able to tell people who worry about these sort of things, no, your Buddhist or Hindu or Jewish or Sikh friend who's living their best life, is not going to hell because they're not a baptized Christian. No. 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 When John the baptizer is yelling at the Pharisees and baptizing those people in the Jordan River for the forgiveness of sin, he's urging them to a fuller life. You heard it. A new life. A life of growth and joy, a green and growing life. And it's this life 
that he's urging them to live differently. This life, for anyone to live as a follower of Jesus. And he says, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I want you to hear this. The Holy Spirit's gifts are many, but one of them is joy. And wherever the Holy Spirit is found, there is greening life. Fullness of life. Just like John the baptizer said. So your baptism, Sarah, and your baptism today, Abby, this is an invitation to life with God and community that is filled with joy and that's a living and a greening and a growing. It's a life where the power of God's love, John says, will transform you from the inside out. Your baptism, Abby, Saris, your baptism today, it's a tangible reminder that you are God's beloved child. You have always been God's beloved children. It's in the waters of the Spokane River. When you are baptized today, they're going to wash over you, and they're going to cover you from head to toe, and they're going to remind you that God's love is like that. It covers you. It's all over you. It's in you and on you. It sustains you like water. It keeps you alive. Now, I'm getting hoarse. Hang on a minute. Speaking of water. In the act of baptism, many people will tell you, you've been saved. You have now received salvation. And there may be a lot of different understandings about what saving and salvation is all about. So I thought I'd give you my take, our take here. Salvation is not about being saved from hell. That's a whole nother sermon for another day. You can ask Bob to give that one, okay? All righty. I did one on hell already. It was way fun. I just want to say, don't be bothering your heads about hell. Because salvation, from its Hebrew roots, okay, we're going back here, means you are protected from harm and you are healed. So let your baptism, your baptisms today be a healing time and heal any kind of hurts that have been caused by human cruelty. Let them be healed by God's great love. And let your baptism be an experience of freedom from harm. Spiritual harm, any kind of harm. Let your baptism give you the freedom of knowing yourself as a treasure in God's eyes. Let your baptism today be a part of your growing as a beautiful, greening person following Jesus in the world who asks you to live your best life, your blooming life, your life of love and hope and service. See, baptism is a moment of resounding truth when each and every one who is baptized recognizes yet again or learns maybe for the first time, that you are precious in God's eyes. You belong. You belong. You belong to the community of all those who follow Jesus all over the world, but particularly, you belong to this community. These people here in this place called Westminster, there is a community who are going to be with you today and in your future, and they're there to support you and encourage you to live your greenest life, your blossoming of yourself. 
And there's one more thing we need to be perfectly clear about. Queer or straight, there is no distinction in God's love. There's no limit to God's love, nor is there any limit on the love of this faith community. Can I get an amen? amen. You bring queer gifts and cis gifts. You bring your unique gifts and your own precious lives, and this community receives you and your gifts with joy. Can I get an amen? Through your baptism, you join this community of Jesus followers. And with them, they're going to push you to grow. Continue to grow. Grow in your knowledge of your own giftedness, your preciousness, your power to do good, to be good, and to give good to the world. Can I have an amen? So when this community prays for you today about your baptism, we are praying that you experience the green and blossoming possibilities of your life ahead of you and that your experience of your baptism today will be a beginning of protection from any harm, any hurt, and that we will pray for your joy in the Holy Spirit. And we will be with you as you blossom and as you grow in your knowledge and your heart's understanding of God's love for you, your preciousness in God's eyes, and the countless gifts of love and life that we will share with you and you will share with us. Can I have one more? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.